guys welcome to becoming him episode two i just got finished reading i'm still reading atomic habits it's a good book it's by james clear and this chapter was called the man who didn't look right some of the things that i wrote down include before we can effectively build new habits we need to get a handle on our current ones until you make the unconscious conscious it will direct your life and you will call it fate in the book it talks about this idea of pointing and calling and basically it's a safety system designed to reduce mistakes it reduces errors by up to 85 percent it cuts accidents by 30 percent and it raises awareness between the unconscious and subconscious and he gave an example of like this train system in tokyo and how he saw this lady who got her arm stuck in the train trying to get her son out and the doors closed 
and within a few seconds because they had a system of pointing and calling like is the signal green are the doors closed and is there anyone else out there and they see this lady they end up stopping the train and he just did a lot of research based off of that instance on this system of pointing and calling and he talks about like how it reduces errors and it allows for more productive and efficient results rather than just not saying things out loud and he was talking about like how you can do it in your own life especially with bad habits you're trying to break hearing your bad habits aloud makes the consequences seem more real but yeah that's what i got from the book today So I've just finished my plans, brick by brick and break free from comparison in the Holy Bible app. And it's currently 9.19. Oh, 9.20, it just changed. I'm gonna share some of my notes with you guys. From break free from comparison, it said the easiest, most destructive way we compare is through social media I don't however I don't think the answer is to remove yourself from social media the devil is in the extremes oftentimes comparison comes in the form of appearances in person or through social media we see the experience name brand or followers and make judgments without knowing the full story the problem with this comes when we keep ourselves from authentically connecting with others we assume they are out of our league or have nothing to offer based on our perception of them the things we compare show us a great deal about what's important to us that really hit me because there are some times where I look at where I've been or where I have struggled and I'm a very sociable person but it's hard for me to get closer with people that I can't relate to in certain ways and I've seen that very recently and personally I'm just like I, I don't know how we're gonna how, I don't know how this is gonna work because I don't I know that you don't understand me in the way that I've been conditioned well I know that you respect me in the way that I've been conditioned and I know that I respect you in the way that you've been conditioned but how are we gonna grow together and that's the mindset that I was in, but I'm excited to move forward in this mindset of really trying things out. Like, okay, I was raised differently, you were raised differently. Okay, let's see how this is gonna work. Like, let's talk about it, let's communicate, let's have a conversation about it. And the thing is, I'm so sociable, and with the people that have made it to being like my really close friend, they get detail after detail after detail. I find it just very interesting with people that I don't have a lot of similarities to and I'm trying to form a close-knit relationship with. It's harder for me to create that bond or let me not say it's harder. It takes a lot more work and for the phase that I'm in right now, detachment and not focusing on potential it's really hard to understand the borderline of like i don't want to make it that deep because i'm practicing detachment and i'm not focused on like the potential of what this friendship could be but i'm also trying to not judge you based off of your appearances or your experiences I don't know. It's something that I have to figure out and I'm excited to do it and scared because it's not familiar to me and us as humans, us as artists, us as creatives, we like what's familiar. We like what works. Once we figure out what works, oftentimes we do the same thing over and over again, maybe in a different way, but we like what's familiar because it feels good. We know that it works. And why do something different when we know that it works? And I do understand and respect that there are so many things that I can learn from people totally different than me. I'm not neglecting that at all, but 
sometimes it is harder to carry a conversation when there are certain mannerisms and nuances that are adjacent to who I want to become or who I see myself as and it can be a little bit of a gray area with people that are new and I guess that just means more communicating but I don't know it's a very interesting I don't know it's confusing some other things I got from break free from comparison was when you give to the needy do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that you're giving so that your giving may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you like i like to protect my peace i love to protect my peace like i don't like all the rah 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 unless it's time to get rah 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 you know like with things i'm passionate about like and youtube like that's when it's time to get rah 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 because you trying to play with me please don't play with me but when it comes to like other things like i really 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 enjoy protecting my peace so i won't i wouldn't say that i'm secretive but i'm very careful with my words very very careful because i don't want to be telling a lie and honestly i don't feel like it's a lie if you're protecting your peace i feel like a lie is something that you do just for fun but i also make sure that i'm not lying I'm very, very careful with my words. This verse emphasizing that when you give, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. It just reminded me to protect my peace. Like there's a lot of times where I know I have like maybe exciting news or something that someone else doesn't know that confided in me, but is about this person or I don't know, something, 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 some news, some, some something. And whether that be an opportunity, whether that be anything. And I, if someone were to ask me about it, I would be very careful with my words. Like I, yeah, I really enjoy protecting my peace. The way I think about it is that in the next like four to five years, whatever situation is making you mad right now or whatever situation that like is conflicting or just has like a po opposing viewpoints and that I'm kind of neutral in, it's really not gonna matter four or five years down the, down the road. Like it really, it really isn't so that's why I choose to protect my peace sometimes I don't let the left hand know what the right hands doing because I want to protect my peace <laughs> y'all i just finished journaling meditating and saying my letter to the universe and god and i wanted to share a little bit of what i journaled about so i call this chapter working hard or heartily working and i think it's very interesting because while i was in school this is a little backstory while i was in school we did what well, we read um the Price of Black Ambition by Roxane Gay in my writing seminar class and it's really sat with me especially today because I was just thinking well this specifically working hard or hardly working just talking about the ambitions of a black person and how because of how you were raised will determine how hard you feel like you should be working and I was writing how this is the most summer of a summer that I've ever had. Normally in the summer, I'm dancing nonstop 24 seven. And it was crazy, like back to back to back, just different place, different place, just different place. And I felt like I needed to be in so many different places because I felt like I needed to always constantly be growing. And I feel like this is the most summer of a summer that I've had. Like I went to New York, not for school, but for an actual vacation. I had a couple of weeks here where 
well, before I went to New York, that I literally did nothing. Like, I just took time to, like, process everything that happened in the year, and I was just, like, I did nothing. Like, I sat in that bed literally all day and watched Netflix and just, like, really digressed off of just everything that happened this school year. Because it can be a lot once you're just on go. Like, literally for 10 months of the year outside of two. It's crazy. And I needed that time to, like, really do nothing. And I was just talking about, like, for some odd reason, I feel as though I'm not doing enough. But I believe it's my potential whispering in my ear. I'm waking up. And then I, then I <laughs> counter... I conflicted myself when I was saying I'm waking up at 4 a.m. stretching, manifesting, praying, reading, journaling, working out when I've never done this, especially while being almost a month consistent on YouTube, literally never. I was like, I literally have never done any of this and I'm literally sitting here questioning, am I working hard or hardly working? And yes, I could be doing more content, organize my photos, or go through my closet, go through some other clothes that I don't want that's like also on my to-do list for the summer. But I literally have not done this specifically ever in my life. Like, I was never, a year ago today, I was not waking up at 4 a.m. No, I know that for a fact. I was not waking up at 4 a.m. I maybe I, I maybe woke up at like 5 or 6, but not 4. And <laughs> I say that like it's too crazy of a difference. Like people are probably going to watch this and be like, what did you just say? But I didn't wake up at 4, nor did I have all this stuff in my routine. As I was journaling, I was realizing that every single year I continued to reinvent myself to a new level. Like I was waking up at 6, then I was waking up at 5, then I'm waking up at 4. I'm telling you, I'm sorry, I will not be waking up at 3. <laughs> that won't be happening unless it's, no, it just won't be happening unless it's for like an opportunity. I don't see any purpose waking up at 3 o'clock. Before, I could wake up at 4, I could wake up at 5, I could wake up at 6. Because like... It's not even 10 o'clock and I've done my whole morning routine. Like I've stretched, I've worked out, I've prayed, I've manifested. Like I know what I want to do for the day. I literally have the rest of the day to do it. And sometimes people are just waking up. Like now they're getting ready to brush their teeth. Now they're getting ready like to eat. And now they want to go to the gym. And it's like by the time they're done with all that, like it took me from four to 10, that's six hours. I've been up for six hours. Imagine waking up right now and then they'll be done by 4 p.m. and then they only have what like a couple more hours before the day is over and they want to like go to sleep or stay up on their phone or something when I have all of this time to do all this stuff yeah so this journal entry I was literally just having a conversation with myself that like although I feel as though I'm not working that hard I am number one and number two Although I felt I was getting mad at myself for thinking that I'm not working as hard, but I'm choosing to enjoy that side of me that's like, you're not working that hard because it shows me that although I'm doing all of these crazy things and like, I'm like my body's sore from like workouts and different things, my brain is still telling me I can keep going. But and that is all for this journal entry.
guys. So it's currently 4.03. I've done a lot. I want to say I finished my like actual morning routine around like 10.30, like 10ish. So I still had a lot of the day to myself. And then I ate like lunch, which is really like breakfast for normal people around like 11ish. Um, oh, I washed dishes first. So that took some time. So it was definitely like 12ish. I washed dishes, I ate, I washed and dried my sheets, and then I like sat in my bed and I like took a moment because I just feel like I've been doing a lot and I've just been <laughs> just doing so much. Well, not so much as in like, oh my goodness, like it's a lot, but you know, I was just really active. I've been up for a period of time and I was like, okay, like let's just chill. So I watched... Makai Carter and Arrington Allen. I'm really in I'm really obsessed with black male content creators. That's literally all I watch on YouTube right now, especially if they're on their hygiene, on their regimen, like just a morning routine, having consistent like schedules. I'm obsessed with like watching a lot of black male content creators because I see myself in them. Um, outside of Makai and Arrington Allen, I love watching Marquise and Ahmad. I love watching Phil Colfer. I love watching Obio Jones. I love watching Tariq Ali. Those are a lot of just black male content creators that I watch. Did that. I handled that. I currently have a job right now, but I'm planning on getting a second one. So I spent like at least like 30 to 45 minutes, maybe an hour, just applying to so many different job applications and on top of like calling the place that I work at now to see if they had like any other shifts outside of the one that I work because money needs to be made there's things that need to be funded and I need to fund them and I'm gonna make sure that I fund them because I am grown and I am becoming him and I'm an adult so I need to act like one and not expect my parents to be paying for everything so that's what I've been doing. I'm so like, I just want to go to sleep because my brain's just been like, oh, plane, oh, bank, oh, job, oh, dishes, oh, sheets, your whole crazy fiasco morning routine. And it's been a very productive day, but I think what kind of like made me get overwhelmed a little bit was doing the job applications because that wasn't on my schedule but I realized the last thing that I had to do was check through my emails I was like oh my goodness let me go ahead and like do these job applications but then now it's four o'clock and I'm overwhelmed and I just want to go to sleep because I've been up for so long oh my god I've been up for 12 hours oh my god I just realized that but yeah Currently, I'm just getting ready to go through my school email and for the rest of the day, I'm literally just gonna probably do nothing. Oh, I also posted on TikTok. I did a lot today and handled a lot of business. So I just want to chill for a little bit and yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> Hi guys, so it is currently 5.20, yes, and I am done for the day. All in all, I would say today was a pretty productive day. Like, I woke up, I got a lot of stuff done. I really hope you enjoyed Becoming Him episode two, and I will see you next Saturday. Just the beginning.